Dress on your wrist plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we got some syrup to get into. So Beyonce is in the middle of catching a lot of smoke right now. And I think that it's time we talk about Robin S and her dirty little secret, because there is a dirty little secret behind her hit song, Show Me Love. We know that Show Me Love has been all up and through the news lately because... Beyonce sampled the song allegedly on her new release of a record called Break My Soul, which is on her upcoming project titled Renaissance, right? Beyonce is coming and we've been hearing this for a while. So now while Robin S may have had the flu back in the day, she certainly knows who Andrea Martin is as it pertains to this song and in general. So listen, after you subscribe, make sure you didn't already paid your fare. It is free to support this channel. You ain't got to spend no money, although you can. Make sure y'all hit thumbs up for free. Pay your fare on this bus ride, okay? You can send a cash app. You can send a super chat. But you don't got to spend no money to support. And it's free to hit that thumbs up button. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure, right, that if you are in the live chat, you know that I appreciate you. Shout out to all the folks because it is literally three o'clock in the morning over here in Baltimore. But let's get ready for takeoff. Drop some pancakes in the chat before we get into the real woman behind this Show Me Love song. And while I feel like Beyonce is catching a lot of smoke, I feel like there are some parallels to how Robin S felt bombarded and how someone else felt bombarded. Smoke don't only need to be going Beyonce's way. Let's get ready and get into it. I'm going to tell you about this situation. The plainest Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me <laughs> some black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? Now, before we get into the real woman behind this song, it's important to remember that Beyonce utilizing this record as a sample or interpolation, because there is a strong debate going on right now about how it's not a sample, it's an interpolation, and there are two different things. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, right? This is definitely a situation where Beyonce has made Robin S. relevant again after years of dormancy. It's been a while. It's been a while, it's been a while, it's been a while. Robin is being very possessive over this song and this piece of artwork, right? And I think that there's somebody else that we should be highlighting instead. But let's really talk about how Robin S, she threw some shade towards Beyonce and then she decided to thank Beyonce. So there were a lot of things wrapped into one. A lot of Robin's actions caused social media to go into a tizzy, which caused... Beyonce's PR team to go into overdrive to try and fix the situation. Let's get into how Robin S threw some shit. And if you don't know what song we're talking about, it's this song right here. So that's just a snippet because, you know, I can't play but so much without getting in trouble or getting some copyright or whatever the case is. But this is the song that is up for discussion in this song. This is the song that Beyonce allegedly referenced in her recent single, Break My Soul, on the Renaissance album that is supposed to be releasing on June the 29th. Let's get into Robin S and how she threw shade and thanked Beyonce all in the same gesture. It doesn't have to be confirmed. The singer knows her songs. And my son called me and he's like, Mom, Mom, you're trending all over the place. You know, Beyonce put her song out and, and it's Show Me Love and, and you're trending everywhere. Maybe we can do a collab together. You know, I mean, that, that's always a dream. I can't even, wow. <laughs> Just a lot of thanks. This is Robin S. And this message goes out to... The queen be herself, Beyonce, to Jay-Z, to the entire team. Thank you so much for giving me my flowers while I'm still alive. I am honored 
and I'm excited to see what else can happen. All right, so that's what Robin S. had to say. And basically, right, her insinuation was that she, the way she found out, it caught her off guard. You know, the undercurrent of her shade was, you know, there was an implication present that she never got paid because she found out on social media about this song and the way it was utilized in Beyonce's upcoming project. However, I just want to bring to reference the fact that this is a song that she felt like it caught her off guard when she heard a remix, a sample, an interpolation, whatever it is that she heard, right? And I would, I'm, I'm eager to know how you feel about it, Sicky. Do you feel like this was a sample, an interpolation, a remix? What are your thoughts? Because the music junkies, right, are, they're having a debate and, and, I love reading about what they think about it. There's someone else who was caught off guard about this song and when it released originally in 1993, right? Officially, although the song was made around 1990, 1991, this song has definitely been through it. But the same way that Robin S was caught off guard by hearing it on the radio and someone calling her and saying, hey, I'm hearing a, a, a version of this song on the radio, there was someone else who felt this way in the past as well. And her name is Andrea Martin. Let's get into what she has to say. My biggest mistake was not knowing that all the time as a demo singer that I was actually writing the records. Well, for example, like I used to demo a lot of records and there was a club beat that came on and two guys were like, oh, um, here's some lyrics. You know, at the time I was getting paid 150 as a demo. And, um, you know, he said to me, oh, if you put this demo down and I don't have a melody, but if you make these lyrics work, I'll give you $300. So I was like, 300? Okay, focus. Right. <laughs> right. So right. the Woo! beat came Ellie. on right. and I'm sitting there, you know, you don't know what you're writing. He's like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's too much lyrics here. <laughs> Heartbreak promises. Woo I have more than my share. Woo oh, yeah. <laughs> So I wake up one day, <laughs> right? The three hundred dollars. This was the check. Right. Wow! And my sister called me. She go, "You on the radio?" Mm. So I'm like, "No, I can't be on the radio." I said, "Oh!" <laughs> and then you know, you know your tags. Right. My tag was, "Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> oh yeah." So I thought I was cool. It was like Michael Jackson was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, I'm gonna do that in every demo. Mm -hmm. So you wake up, it's a hit. You don't realize that you wrote a little bit of it. You don't have anybody that came in that was a witness. And that's when you go wrong. And I'm not gonna name a, a couple other records, but you know, you learn and you learn from your mistakes. on your wrist playing giant. So again, that is Andrea Martin. When we talk about this song that Beyonce has sampled, we talk about Robin S. feeling possessive over the record. Meanwhile, she didn't own it. She didn't write it. And she didn't even sing it. She was Millie Vanilli in her way through that song, which was actually something that was quite popular back in the day when we talk about dance music and house music in the 90s and the 80s. This was something that, and this was before Millie Vanilli even came along. So the thing about this song when Robin S coming out and basically throwing shade and then thanking Beyonce and wanting a collaboration, the implication behind everything that Robin S said was that she never got paid because she found out on social media. If you found out on social media and someone quote unquote sampled your song, if you say it's your song, right? Meanwhile, Andrea is saying that she came up with these lines on the spot being a demo singer. Is it really your song or not? <laughs> it's not even your voice. And, and, and you were lip singing a bit. And when she talks about her tag, oh, yeah. Okay, so this was something that I found in the song. And honestly, I don't think that Andrea Martin has a reason to lie. I'm going to get into her catalog in a minute, okay? Matter of fact, I'll just get into it now, right? I jump around my notes. And so Andrea Martin is responsible for writing, 
quite a few songs in vogue. Don't let go. We all know that song is being like the main song on the set it off soundtrack. Monica walk out of my life. She's a singer, a songwriter. She was a demo artist. Um, SWV, you're the one. Tony Braxton, I love me some him. Angie Stone, I wish I didn't miss you. She's written for Blue Cantrell, Sean Paul, Jennifer Hudson, Leona Lewis, Better in Time, Melanie Fiona, It Kills Me. The list goes on and on when we talk about the catalog and how Andrea Martin has written a lot of songs in the industry. So I don't feel like she's being messy because this isn't the story that she's like in Monique fashion, right? Went to every mountaintop and spoke about every time she got it. She had a chance because she was so busy writing songs. And I'll be getting to my final thoughts about the situation at the end. Like my opinion about all the facts come together, the facts between Beyonce and her new rendition of the song, Robin S and her claim to this song and Andrea Martin, her alleged participation in this song. All three of those facts combined, I'm gonna get into my thoughts at the end of this song. However, there was, you know, social media is still in a tizzy. They are dragging Beyonce because they feel like, huh, <laughs> If, if, if Robin S is saying she found out about this on social media, then that obviously means she didn't get paid, right? If there is a work, a, a body of work that you feel like somebody is utilizing as a sample and you're a singer, you would think that you would get paid for it. But does she, and a lot of people were having these technical conversations with, well, does she own the record? Does she own the masters? Does she own the rights? Does she produce it? Does she, she didn't produce it. She didn't write it. And she didn't even sing it according to Andrea Martin. The fact of the matter is Robin S has performed this song several times in person, but she has addressed the difference in the sound. That's the thing about it. She has addressed how the studio version, right? The radio edit, the commercialized and released version that was released. She addressed the difference in sound from that version and her performing it live. And she says she had the flu. I want to know if you all believe it. Let's get into this. And look, if y'all haven't already taken a moment to hit thumbs up on the video, I don't know what you're waiting for. If you want to fight, just, just tell me you want to fight because we can fight. It's three o'clock in the morning and I'm bringing y'all this syrup and this information. Hit the dag on thumbs up button. But no, let's get into this because Andrea did, uh, um, I'm sorry, Robin S did address how different the studio version and her live performances sound. She said that she had the flu. Is it the flu or is it Andrea Martin? Questions that need answers. Again, I, I want to re-emphasize this was before Millie Vanilli even came along, but there was a lot of lip syncing happening when we talk about dance music and house music back in the 90s, in the 80s. This happened way, way more often than you would even think. Some of your faves. Millie Vanilli was just the obvious version that got caught a little too late, to be honest. This had been going on when we talk about dance music. But... Show Me Love, we can see. It was written by American songwriters Alan George and Fred McFarlane. Again, we can hear what Andrea Martin had to say, which was that she was coming in on the chorus. She was given a set of lyrics and she felt like there were too many lyrics in a small amount of time. So she slowed it down and she put her spin on it, which means she spent some time writing this song. But there were no witnesses there to confirm it. And, that, and this was the part that Andrea Martin actually spoke on she was asked a question about what's one mistake you've learned from or about the entertainment business and this was her response I wish I had to know when I was being a demo singer and I was coming up with stuff on the fly that I was actually writing songs and that some of the track that I was laying down would be released where the artist wouldn't even be singing their voice on top of it so this is really interesting okay so when we get into Robin S saying she had the flu when it comes to this song, and this is a song, honestly, I do feel like the song is timeless, but every time I hear it, I, I literally have to give Andrea her props, okay? The original version of the song was released in 1990. I told you that earlier, although it was officially released according to like the, the, the general public in 1993, Released in 1990 on Champion Records. When recording the song, Robin S. says she had the flu, but she powered through and sung it. 
and it was not successful. Not you claiming that the difference in the voice, Andrea Martin put that down. And you said, oh, well, I had the flu and that's why y'all sounded different. I don't think so, baby. I don't think so. I think you were pulling the early Millie Vanilli because I've listened to a lot of Andrea Martin singing this song live between being at the Apollo and different places. And she does not sound the way that the radio edit and the commercialized version, right, that was distributed. That's not... That's not how she sounds. But she explains the studio version that she had the flu. And my question to you, Stickies, is do you think that she really had the flu? Or do you think it was Andrea Martin? Any and all thoughts? I appreciate what you think down below. But look, this is what I want to say. I think that it was pretty, hmm, I'm trying not to use a vulgar word, but I think that it was pretty raunchy for Robin S to say, well, I, I was caught off guard about this song because I found out on social media, but thank you, Beyonce, and maybe we can collaborate because it sounds like Andrea Martin. It sounds like she was caught off guard too, the way that she found out about this song and the way she found out that you weren't even going to be recreating the song, right? Because when the demo was done, you literally got some, I want to say generic person, and I don't want to say it to say that they aren't special, but the demo singer is giving you an example as to how you can sing this song to really make it pop. You didn't even recreate that demo. You released Andrea Martin's demo, and you've been taking her credit for years, and here you are being relevant today, and unfortunately, Andrea Martin isn't even here anymore to refute this. She passed away last year. So the same way it sounds like Andrea Martin was caught off guard, the same way that Robin S. was allegedly caught off guard with the way that she found out about this song over the phone from a family member based off of the radio and or social media. We know social media didn't exist back in 1993 when Andrea found out about this, but Robin S. says that her son called her based off of a social media tizzy and based off of hearing it on the radio. So it sounds like the both of you found out about this record being cr created or released, re-released the same way. And it's 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 really sad and I think that I think that there should be more respect put on Andrea Martin's name. She's responsible for way too many songs within our culture. My biggest mistake was not knowing that all the time as a demo singer that I was actually writing the records. Or well, for example, like I used to demo a lot of records and there was a club beat that came on and two guys were like, oh, um, here's some lyrics. You know, at the time I was getting paid 150 as a demo. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he said to me, oh, if you put this demo down and I don't have a melody, but if you make these lyrics work, I'll give you $300. So I was like, 300? Okay, focus. Right. <laughs> right. So right. the Woo! beat came Ellie. on right. and I'm sitting there, you know, you don't know what you're writing. And he's like, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, okay, it's too much lyrics here. Doo, 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 doo. Heartbreak promises. I have more than my share. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I wake up one day, right? The three hundred dollars. This was the check. Right. Wow! And my sister called me. She go, "You on the radio?" Mm. So I'm like, "No, I can't be on the radio." I said, "Oh!" And then you know, you know your tags. Right. My tag was, "Oh yeah, mm. oh yeah." So I thought I was cool. It was like Michael Jackson. I was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do that in every demo. Mm -hmm. So you wake up, it's a hit. You don't realize that you wrote a little bit of it. You don't have anybody that came in that was a witness. And that's where you go wrong. And I'm not going to name a, a couple other records, but you know, you learn and you learn from your mistakes. So this is one of those vintage, deep, dark secrets of R&B or world house music, right? There's so many different categories, right? So let me let me name it correct, of house music. But when we talk about black culture back in the day, in the early 1900s, this is someone who was working, they were clearly jipping her, right? $150 as a bomb demo singer. And the demo singers often, they either looked at the lyrics and made the lyrics work, or they looked in the lyrics and said, this ain't it, it's not gonna give, but based on this melody, let me give this, which means they are rewriting the record, which means they're writing records. And I, I get it, inflation is a thing, but think about it. 
whether it had been $150 or even in today's day and age, $1,500, that still wouldn't be enough to be writing a hit that's going to be played over and over again that's damn near timeless. This is a timeless joint. It really is. Timeless joint, and I'd be daggone if I'm paid $150 or $300 to come out with a classic joint like this. There's a lot to make you think here. And like, I, I want to put all of the due respect on Andrea's voice. She was a demo singer. And like I said, when she was asked, what's the one mistake that you've learned from in this music or entertainment business? This was her response. So, you know, she was a songwriter outside of being a demo artist. She even released some of her own music as well, which was really good. But like I said, she wrote some of the best songs in black culture. She even wrote some songs outside of black culture as well. You know, that was some white folk looking for some soul, right? Some Justin Timberlake type people and Backstreet Boys and stuff like that. There were a couple of people who went ahead and, and, and bought her music and her ballads and things um, from her. So she made music inside and outside of our community and our culture. But you know, only us, only we can make it pop the way that it's supposed to. But for you to be writing in vogue, don't let go. Monica, walk out of my life. SWV, you're the one. Tony Braxton, I love me some him. Angie Stone, wish I didn't miss you. You know what I'm saying? Writing for Melanie Fiona and Jennifer Hudson. The list goes on and on. I think we need to put some respect on Andrea's name. I really do. And just the way that Robin S is getting clout, is getting clout off of this recent thing. And she kind of threw shade towards Beyonce, which, you know, you know, if we want to keep it a buck. You know, she's 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 getting all this clout and all this relevance. If you have Beyonce even sent her some flowers because of all of the mess going on online. If we take a look over to Robin S and her social media, we can see here she is a, a bouquet of flowers from Beyonce. Right. The caption reads, look at my gift that was just delivered. Please read the card. Two generations of legacies coming together. Beyonce, you are now a part of my legacy and I'm a part of your legacy. Let's ride this way, baby. May you continue to be that beacon of light, that ray of sunshine, and that hope for the generations to come always in my heart. And look, this is just proof that Beyonce's team has been doing some serious PR work after the social media storm from the implication that Robin S was not only not paid, but she wasn't even notified about Beyonce referencing this track and inspiration of Break My Soul. Again, she's even mentioned in wanting a collaboration with Beyonce. But my question to you is, is that fair? Do you feel like she's, she's the person that this song belongs to? She didn't produce it. She damn sure didn't write it. And dare I say, it's not even her voice on the track. Is it fair? Matter of fact, let me give you the credits side by side of Beyonce's song and the Show Me Love song from Robin S. Because some people feel like Beyonce don't owe Robin a damn thing. Okay? Because when it comes to the people who wrote the song, they are properly credited. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger on the page we can see robin s in her song show me love the two songwriters here the only two songwriters here are alan george and fred mcfarlane and when we take a look at beyonce's credits we see fred mcfarlane and alan george i mean we also see freddie ross and black and mild and jay-z christopher stewart the dream and beyonce however the writers are properly credited from this song by Robin S that she doesn't own the rights to. She doesn't own the masters to. She doesn't have writer's credit because she didn't write it. And Andrea Martin, according to her, she is the voice. And she had a great amount to do with the writing and production of this song. So this was some information I found out. And I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. Everybody dragging Beyonce on behalf of Robin, but who's going to drag Robin on behalf of Andrea Martin? Put some respect on her name. SWV, you're the one. Don't Let Go by In Vogue. Set It Off is one of my favorite movies. So due to the fact that that's like the main song 
on the soundtrack. Stop playing with her. She's far too talented for y'all to be playing on her name. And honestly, honestly, I, I, I've got some more thoughts, but let, let me put that off and get through my last couple of uh, last couple of notes. Okay, what's it gonna be? Okay, is it fair? Right? Is it fair for Robin S to quote unquote steal credit if you feel like you're stealing credit from Andrea Martin? Do you think that Robin S has the right to be possessive and gain a clout off of this song, essentially lip syncing and Millie Vanilli in this situation without ever having put respect? on Andrea Martin and her name. These are questions that need answers and stickies. Listen, I am anxious to hear from y'all down below. I want to get into my final thoughts and unanswered questions. And then I want to hear about your final thoughts and unanswered questions. Make sure y'all hit thumbs up on this video if you haven't already. Let's get into my final thoughts. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. So look, whether you're in the live chat right now in real time or whether you are chasing the bus, I'm going to share my final thoughts and unanswered questions while you comment yours down below in the chat. I feel like you could tell, right? Like what, what I take away from all this fact and all this syrup that I just slapped and laid on you just now about this 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 song right my thought is that you could tell that andrea martin was very unproblematic when we talk about show me love and this jam she was unproblematic and you could tell she was reserved and she didn't want to be confrontational or cause a scene um i do also feel like you shouldn't have to be meek you shouldn't have to be docile um, when you are taking credit for something that you are goddamn responsible for, that you created. And, you know, there are other instances that Andrea Martin actually has stated that, listen, there are other songs that this has happened to me in, but I don't even want to state them. She mentioned it every now and then, but it wasn't something that she harped on in Monique's fashion and, and let that get into the way. And ultimately, it's, it's, it's gut-wrenching. It's gut-wrenching to have someone literally steal your work. Lord knows I know how it feels, but let me take myself out of this, right? Because I ain't in the music. I just create content. But yo, when somebody steals your work, whether it be your research or whatever, it is gut-wrenching. But I think that ultimately, Andrea Martin, God bless her soul. I think that she ultimately won in the end. She had a far more fruitful career than a Robin S. And I'm not trying to be shady. I'm just stating facts. I don't feel like Robin S deserves hate or deserves to have her head cut off, but I do think the very least that she could do is, is, is give some credit where it's due and put some respect on Andrea's name. But I will say that Andrea Martin has had a far more fruitful career. She's had far more longevity in writing for En Vogue and Monica and SWV and Tony Braxton, Angie Stone, Blue Cantrell, Jennifer Hudson. Her career ultimately, it stood the test of time and it proved that Andrea Martin is far more adaptable. It proves that she is far more capable of adjusting and keeping up with the times. Robin S, her last hit was when? Don't worry, I'll fight. It can't top the time period in which Andrea Martin actually reigned supreme. And those are just my thoughts. My final thought is may Andrea Martin rest in power. She passed away last year at the age of 49 years old. And she's responsible, despite me naming some songs and naming some songs more than once in this video, because I think she deserves her flowers. And I hate that by the time I was able to do enough research to publish a piece of content, it was too late. She wasn't here for me to give her flowers to. Um, but I think decency and respect goes a long way. Um, but she she passed away last year at the age of 49 years old. And, and I still think that her career means a lot more than a Robin S who won't bother to ever utter her name, although she did bother to utter the difference in the two different tracks in her live performances in the studio version of the song because they're two different people. And she says she had the flu whole time. It was really Andrea Martin on the track. 
here's the proof of her saying that she had the flu when she sang the song to explain away how different the tracks sounded. But nonetheless, Stickies, look, I want to hear from y'all down below in the comment section. What's Oprah saying in the comments? Because Oprah going off, she hasn't had a hint since the first time she lost. Oprah says she hasn't had a hit since the first time I lost with... You know what, Oprah? Thank you for having us go to the bush. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. You know, Oprah comes to my bush every now and then. <laughs> Oprah stops through the stream and lets me know how her, Gail, and Stedman are feeling. And look, I be appreciating Oprah's presence, okay? This was something really interesting. And I felt like it, it not enough people talk about it. I, I feel like there's only about like, 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 like six to seven percent of us who really know that Robin S is not responsible for the quote unquote hit single, Show Me Love. It's really Andrea Martin's voice when you listen to it. And I'm like, let me let, let me put this story up. Let, let me wake folk up to the real mastermind, the real voice, the sound, the woman behind this record. It is without a doubt Andrea Martin and she is just a legend. A legend. I was about to not be able to find any words, but I think a legend is very fitting. Darlene Wilkins, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. I greatly appreciate it. Stickies, I want to know how you all feel about it. Be sure to tag me in your favorite trending topics on Instagram and on Twitter. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check the community tab if you haven't already. Make sure if you haven't already hit thumbs up on this video that you share it in your group chat via text message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, however it is that you share videos. If you thought I was dope, if you thought the presentation, the way that I served y'all up this black news, this celebrity update. If you thought it was interesting, if you thought that if you learned something new for sure about the music industry and who was really responsible for this song, make sure you share this joint with someone, okay? I always do my best to remind y'all to do something to relax if you haven't already, you know? Um, but look, let me know your thoughts on all of the neighborhoods that we stopped through. Make sure you keep it sticky and real. Does Robin S. own the song Show Me Love in your opinion? Do you feel like Beyonce owed her anything? Is it fair the way that she claims possessiveness over this song? Is she stealing credit from Andrea Martin? And do you think that Robin S. really has the right to get clout off of this song and want a collaboration from Beyonce knowing that she ain't even sang this song if we keeping it a buck, okay? Any and all thoughts, I can't wait to hear from y'all down below in the comments. Listen, Make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But be sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any, okay, of this syrup. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. It's literally 3.41 in the morning. So the notification bell is important because if you ever got insomnia, if you on the night shift, you can't go to sleep, whatever the case is, you don't know when I'm going to be picking y'all up on the bus hit the notification bell after you hit that daggone subscribe button and you will always be in the know over on your girl, the plainest James bus on this channel, okay? Now, drop some of them pancake emojis down below and y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed until the next video. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.